More African slaves were imported into Cuba than into the United States. From the 1500s, Spanish colonizers brought about 8,000 Africans, largely from West Africa to Cuba as slaves, to work their sugar plantations. By 1838, at their peak, there were nearly 400,000 slaves on the island. As their numbers increased, so did the tons of sugar Cuba produced. Slavery didn't end in the country until 1886, and even then, education and schools were not accessible to black Cubans. After gaining independence, most Latin American countries ban talk of race in their constitutions and claim to be racial democracies. However, they also promote the idea of racial hierarchy inherited from colonialism by promoting white superiority and black and Indian inferiority. According to To Be Black, according to To Be Black and To Be Cuban by Alain Helg. Cuba has claimed to be a colorblind society where race does not matter because they are all Cubans. But if you ask anyone in Cuba, they'll tell you that racism does exist. So what is being done about it? Afro-Cuban history has not been taught in schools, and scholars feel it is their duty as a country to raise racial awareness so that Afro-Cuban students can stand up to stereotypes, discrimination, and racism. African roots of modern Cuban identity remain both profound and highly visible in virtually any form of expression. Afro-Cuban representation is very low and even shows in the census. Only one-fifth is seen, and many Afro-Cuban intellectuals have called for a new count of people of African descent because they believe the number is much higher. Not only are they erasing their identity in society, but in the official census as well. I hope that the efforts being made to teach about Afro-Cuban history establish it in the curriculum so that Afro-Cubans can learn more about their roots and so that the students that aren't Black can learn more about the painful history of the past.